Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif Mercado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 54. Hoping you guys are doing well. It's a Sunday night, uh, February 23rd, 2020. Um, Today, I chilled out. I really did. I kicked back. Actually, I kicked back towards, towards the afternoon. So, you know, what I do every morning, just my ritual... Whenever I'm home, if I'm home seven days a week, I do it seven days a week, Sundays included, um, is I do get up very early and I work on my novels, okay? So it's very important because um, it's the only time that I'm really not going to get any disturbances. Pretty much the entire house is shut down. Um, I don't work. I don't write my... Well, I do. I go back and forth between the office and other parts. Uh, I go into the house and so on, but... uh, um, I actually like to write my novel on my dining room table. I bring my laptop. Uh, I don't work on my, my laptop does not connect to the internet at all. I do that purposely. Um, I have that off. I don't think I've, I think I've went online with it one time to download something, uh, a program that I needed for the books. But I, I, I purchased that laptop specifically for my novels to write, um, and what I do is I leave that out in the dining room and I, I like to open the curtains and sit down, have my bustelo, look out the window, even though it's a first floor window <laughs> and uh, and write and write. So um, and this is I'm talking about. Yes, yes, y'all. that's the book that I'm currently working on. That's to be released uh, March 27th. Actually, the 23rd is my deadline from Amazon. Uh, it's on for pre-sale right now. I have a pretty high price as a Kindle. Because I'm really not trying to move them as a Kindle. Um, so I'm not even promoting it. Um, I prefer everyone to wait till the paperback comes out um, for now. Then later on, if you want, you want to get the Kindle, get the Kindle version. Uh, it'll be cheaper than what it is right now. Um, <coughs> but you know, that's what I do every morning. Uh, the book is already written. It's been written for about a year, almost two years now. Um, and then I have to put it away. Um, because what happens is when I'm writing... Since I, if I just wrote it, I try to go back to rewrite, there's a lot of errors, and I'll tell you why. I basically know what I'm going to say. So my brain, my eyes kind of skip over misspelled words or sentences that are not, you know, maybe they're wrong or they're backwards, whatever the case may be. But since I know what I already wrote, my my eyes don't catch it. I, I write, I read right over it. It's crazy because I can read a, a paragraph 10 times looking for a mistake and I won't find it. I won't find it. It, it. I have to actually take a pencil and go word and hold the pencil next to each word, go word for word and make sure that I don't say the word unless I uh, touch it with the pencil. I know, I know it sounds weird, but, um, but the other way of doing it is to basically get away from the book. Some people say for s- six weeks, I kind of do a little bit more than that. For me to break away for a year is pretty typical. Um, I like to come back to the book to the point where I don't remember shit. I really don't. I don't remember anything about the book. I remember a little bit of the direction it's going. I might know. I might remember a few scenes, but I don't remember the dialogue. I don't remember the sequence of how things were happening, characters come and go, and I'm like, oh. I f- I totally forgot about him or I forgot about her or I know that there's a character in there maybe there's a it's a it's a love interest I might be like well you know how did uh how did they meet you know I wouldn't remember any of that and that's the way I like to reapproach the book and it's usually during that time when I'm reading it that I um I catch a lot of my errors you know so I'll find all the misspells and the and then what I try not to do and I catch myself doing it a lot is I end up rewriting. And I'm not in the position right now to rewrite this book. I think this book is really, really great. 
Uh, it's probably my favorite, my best work so far. Um, if, if you guys are not uh, familiar with any of my writing, my first novel was Freestyle for Life. Did very well with that. Uh, my second book was um, novel was Freestyle. Um, did well with that. Then I did um, a how-to book called Freestyle Promotions and the Seven Simple Steps to Getting Started. Um, that's actually part of a course. And so th that one's not, you know, that book is finished and it's on the market. You can find it at Barnes & Noble or Amazon. Um, it's available. It's actually, but it's actually attached to a big course. So um, I think in the next, I think next month, the course is finished. We've been working on it for about over a year. I've been working on that thing, so uh, should be done. It's basically done. It's all about going in and, and looking for errors and making sure everything flows the right way. Uh, and then now I have um, Yes, Yes, Y'all. Yes, Yes, Y'all is uh, basically about uh, a Puerto Rican rapper in the 80s. He's uh, trying to get a deal. Um, and the, the, the whole, you know, back then, uh, Puerto Rican rappers were not ideal. That was not what they were looking for. Uh, they wanted that urban kind of street feel. So they were looking for more, you know, black rappers. They, you know, Puerto Ricans, Spanish, white. They just were not doing it. Beastie Boys came in later on. But um, this book, basically, um, it's uh, it's about a guy who, who, who goes out there looking for a deal. And because of the way he looks, he doesn't get a deal. And then he finally finds someone who's willing to, you know, invest in him. And, and they're really excited. Uh, the only thing is that they, they want to flip him up. They want to change him up. And he's not happy about that. But he goes along with it. And it just it just gets into this. It goes into this whole other, you know, he becomes a, a part of this whole other world. Now, I couldn't stop writing. Now, some books, like, I have to really, like, pound. Like, Feast Out to me was a hard book to read, to write, because um, I was entering a new universe, which was the universe of the vampires. Um so that was that was difficult. That was difficult. It was fun, but I had to keep going back and refer to some notes. I couldn't really just go out there and just, you know, throw down. Um, Freestyle for Life, it was my first, so I was really concerned about format and stuff like that. Uh, that's why that took me long. Yes, yes, y'all. was so easy to write. It flowed. It was like butter off my fingers. Um, if you guys go on my Books by Law um, Facebook page, you'll see on the top, I have the little video of Kermit the Frog typing like typing like crazy. I use that because Angel says it reminds her of me, and it's true. I type like that. I type like I'm a maniac. Um, if you stand there and you watch me, I'll type one thing at a time. I'll, I'll be real slow because I'm conscious. But if I get into the flow and I start typing and I get into a conversation, I can literally type as fast as I can think. This is crazy. So if I'm having an entire dialogue going back and forth between two characters, I can type pretty much in real time. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yet, if I sat down and they tested me, I'd probably be one of the slowest typers. But I catch myself. Sometimes I catch myself just da 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 And Angel has caught me like that. So when she saw the come with the frog, she says, man, that's you. <laughs> and it is. I just get crazy. Um, but when I started Yes, Yes, Y'all, all right, so all my books are pretty much uh, 90,000 to 100,000 words, okay? Books are not um, measured by pages. They're measured by word count because um, it has to do with the size of the book. So you can't say 300 pages because 300 pages what? Would that be in uh, like a paperback um, economy novel like the ones you find in... Uh, in the supermarket, um, would it be uh, six by nine, which is basically the size of the books I write? Um, you know, would it be some other odd size? So <clears throat> you can't really go by page count; you have to go by uh, the, the number of words. So when I started this book, of course, I'm always shooting for a hundred thousand words for a novel. If I end up a little below, a little over, that's fine. I try not to go over. I think 100,000 words is good. If I fall down, I could go as low as 80, but I try to go as low, only up down as low as 90. I try not to go below that. I want it to be a nice, decent read. I don't want you guys to pick it up and 
you know, sit on the toilet and finish the book. I don't want that. I want you guys to be able to live with the book for a while. That's the beauty about books, you know. <clears throat> Some people tell me, well, you know, I'm not a fast reader. Well, you're not supposed to. Not with a novel. That's the beauty of it. It's called a bookmark. You take a piece of paper. I don't care what it is. You read a chapter. Pop it in. I try to read by chapters. So when I read other books, I read in chapters because I, a lot of times I don't have the time to sit there and just knock out a book. Um, and if I'm on an airplane, actually reading puts me to sleep. And if I read at night, so I have to read in between. So throughout the day I'm reading, um, and I, I try to knock out a chapter. So I, I always advise people that. So when I write, I try to write Accordingly, so I, I want you to. I want to try to pull you along, make it a page turner till you at least get uh, to the end of the chapter, and then I'll have some sort of cliffhanger in there. So that way, when you put the bookmark and you go about your business, you kind of can't wait to get back to it. So that's my goal when I'm work writing. So when I started with uh, yes, yes, y'all. When I started with yes, yes, y'all, um, my goal was a hundred thousand. I would settle for ninety, but what happened was. I could not stop writing. And I started to go into a lot of detail. See, I love writing detail. I really do. Um, some of it is correct. Some of it, you know, some people, everybody has different, yeah, well, you shouldn't go too much into detail. It doesn't matter. Some people, oh, you shouldn't go that deep into thoughts. Ah, you know, I, I ignore a lot of those rules, you know, and, and because I know when I read, it depends. Now, of course, if I walk in, if in my scene, every time a character walks into the room, you're describing every little thing, that makes no sense unless it means something. So if I'm walking into a room and I need you to understand how crazy this room looks, then I need to really detail the room because I want it to really come to life for you. But if it's a regular room, you know, I might say, oh, yeah, I had a dirty floor and the, and the, and the, a picture frame was tilted, you know? So, meaning that they never really, you know, kept the house, you know what I mean? They didn't care. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll write and I'll give you details according to um, what I think you should know, what could paint the picture and better tell the story. But anyway, so with Yes, Yes, Y'all, I couldn't stop writing. I kept going into details. I kept talking, you know, writing thoughts. I like writing thoughts. Um... I try not to uh, give, they call it exposition, like I try not to tell you everything that they're doing. I try to to make them move on paper. I like to see characters move. So I, you'll see that in between some of my dialogue, whether they're reading something, whether they're mopping the floor. Uh, it's very rarely do I just have two characters looking at each other. Um, I do, but it's not that often. I try not to. Um, so, um, so you know, so that's my goal. But anyway, I ended up taking this wannabe 90 to 100,000 word book, novel. And when I got to the end, when I finished, and I checked my word count, I was at 297,000 words, okay? Which means that when I go into rewrite, some people say, well, the rewrite will cut it down. Not always. Sometimes it expands it. I've seen it. Sometimes mine will expand it. I'll see two sentences, and I'll be like, the sentence is, this is too important. I can't. I have. I need more sentences to, to really describe this. And I'll sit there, and I'll, I'll, I'll expand it, you know? Then I might get a, a chance where I might get to... I saw myself do that today. There was like a whole paragraph. I was like, I read it, I read it, I read it. I was like, yeah, unnecessary. And I cut the whole thing. I just deleted the whole thing, you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, so I ended up with 297,000 words, which is... Let's say 300,000 words, which is more. I can actually probably make, let me see, if I, I could probably make four novels out of it, but mine comes out to three. So when I did it, my first intentions was, okay, this is kind of cool. I'm going to create like the war and peace of, of novels, of freestyle novels, you know? So it was going to be a big book. 
it would be big. It'll look like a freaking Bible, you know? Um, I thought about it and thought about it, and I didn't know if I was ready for that. I didn't know if I was ready. It was something that was kind of messing with me. So I figured in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, now I have to go in and I have to chisel this thing down to one novel, to one to 100,000, maybe 120 at the most. And the angel told me, well, why don't you break it into three books? I thought about that because I know how popular series are. Now, this is not basic. It's not a series. It's basically three parts. But each part, I try to I try to have its own beginning, middle, and end. So let's say you 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 um you read book one. Um, if you don't want to read two and three, um, it's it would be a pretty complete story, you know. Um, I kind of edge you on. You're gonna you're gonna want to continue on that that for sure. But if you didn't want to, you wouldn't feel like it's a story. Excuse me, guys. Uh, it's a story in itself, you know. Um, so that's what I ended up doing, and I, I, you know, had some. If you guys go onto my pages, and you just search around, especially on Facebook, I post a lot there. You actually see the covers of the book; they look really cool. So it sh shows the three phases of this artist. It shows him uh, beginning how he looked when he began. He was out there trying to get a deal, and while uh, doing the hustle, and then you see him after he gets the deal. You see this flamboyant sort of like almost like vanilla ice slash MC hammer, you know, rock star, rapping rock star. And then on the third book, you see him a little aged, more of an executive, kind of chilled out, pulled back a little bit. So it's it's really, it's really cool. It's a, it's a really cool story. Um, I do get raw. So do not, um, do not send this book to your kid's school. <laughs> so <laughs> don't do that um uh, I keep it I keep it raw uh, there is drug use it's pretty intense sexual content um I keep trying to get more and more raw um I have my own reasons for that I just that's the way I want to write like I don't want to hold back anything I don't want I want to really I, I want to make it visual, man. I want to really, you know, some people like that. People love to read, you know, sexual content. It's not an X-rated book, uh, but it's close. <laughs> and um, and then uh, a lot of cursing, a lot of cursing. Uh, these characters curse more than I do. I curse once in a blue moon. I think I curse more on this podcast than I curse in real life. But um, when the book, you know. You guys, I, I do have an option there. If you ever want to pick up the three, I'm doing the three for the price of two. And those I'm actually autographing. I only have a few more I want to do. Um, I had several. I, I set up for 25. I didn't quite hit the 25 yet, uh, but I'm close. And because I, I'm really, I really don't want to ship them. I don't mind signing them, but I don't want to ship them. Um, but I'll make an exception if it's coming from the people listening to this podcast. So all you have to do is go onto my Facebook page um, and see the books and then get in touch with me. It tells you how to do it. Just uh, just let me know that you um, uh, you heard about it on the podcast. And I'll, I'll honor the, the, the deal that I'm doing. So it's basically, I think it's two books for 29. I mean, three books for 29. So the books are normally uh, $14.95. That's what I sell my novels for. So, and there's three of them. So uh, for this deal, I'm doing a, all three for $29.99, I believe, or $29.95. You guys got to check it. I don't have that information here. Um, it's a good deal. And plus, I'll sign it. And uh, and I'll ship it to you. And that uh, I, sh I think with the, I think it's another $5 for the shipping. I, I forgot. So it's like $35 in all. Um well, anyway, you might want to check it out. Uh, get yours if not. Wait, no, no, March 27th will be out. Uh, that's cool too, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, you know, I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm looking forward to that, you know. I, w I was talking about before about don't bring these books to school. So it's so funny because <laughs> Erica, my daughter, uh, brought my first book, uh, Freestyle 
uh, Freestyle for Life. She brought it to, they were talking about writing in school. So she brought a book to school and she uh, she told um, told it. Oh, no, 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 no. She My bad. She didn't bring the book to school. She spoke about it. And, and the teacher pulled the book up on that overhead projector that they use now in school. Um, and if you go on Amazon, it allows you to read the table of contents. Well, listen, <laughs> the shit gets raw just in the table of contents. So, <laughs> so right away, they had to shut it down. Erica came back. She was like, Dad, I didn't. I didn't know. I think one of the chapters is called uh, Pussy City. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, if you guys don't have Freestyle for Life, it's a classic. It's definitely, um, uh, yeah, it's a freestyle called Classic. Get that book. That book went off the market for a little while because I had an issue with the publisher. It's self-published now, but hey, you never know. So if you're a freestyle fan, if you got all the records and all the CDs and pictures and autographs and you, you got to get the book, really. You got to get the book. Even if you don't read it, you need to get the book. Put it to the side. When you see me at a show, I'll sign it for you, whatever the case. Hold on to it, okay? But um, anyway, guys, that's about it for now. Uh, I'm shutting down for the night. Uh, tomorrow's Monday morning. Uh, I mean, tomorrow's Monday in the morning. I'm, I got to get up early again. I was up early this morning. Get up a little earlier tomorrow. Get Santana up on the bus. Get back and some writing done. Um, we're leaving on Friday morning, so um, we'll be heading to Houston, Texas, at, to the Arena Theater. So if you guys are in that area, man, come on down to the show, the Arena Theater, um, February 28th. Um, Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, the original cover girls, and Jocelyn Enriquez. It's going to be a dope show, man. Come on down. Let me know that... that um, that you heard it here in the podcast. Um, and then the next day will be in Austin. So, and that's going to be at Come and Take a Live. Uh, comes to cocktails. Brings you cocktails. What, what, apparently the club used to be called Cocktails. Now it's called Come and Take a Live. That's just going to be the cover girls. I don't know if they have an opening act. That one's going to be a little bit more intimate. A little bit more up and close. Up close and personal. So come on down. Meet the girls. Get some autographs. Take some pictures. I'd like to meet you. Um, it should be a nice weekend. Well, it's going to be busy for us. So, But anyway, until tomorrow night, guys, be cool. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.